Hi there. This is a recording of a recent revision webinar that we held where we are looking at this concept of discounted cash flow. Now, this was one of a series of webinars that we're running on the TutorTutor website that looks at the key quantitative skills that uh, students need to be confident with in order to maximise their marks in important exams. And in the previous series, we looked at index numbers and decision trees. You should find a video of those webinars on the TutorTutor YouTube channel. But let's look now at discounted cash flow. DCF, discounted cash flow for short, is part of a suite of methods and tools known as investment appraisal. And it's important to remember how discounted cash flow compares and contrasts with the other methods that are available to help managers decide whether investment projects are worthwhile, but also to help to decide between projects that perhaps both, uh, might both be worthwhile. Well, the three main methods that you need to be familiar with are payback period. This measures in time the length of time it takes for a project to repay the initial investment and therefore ignores cash flows beyond that point. The average or accounting rate of return, usually shortened to ARR, this is a rate of return measure, a percentage measure that looks at the accounting return on the project. And in particular, it's compared against the target rate of return to see whether it's satisfactory. And thirdly, and the one we'll look at in this webinar, discounted cash flow. And it's often shorted, shortened to DCF, and it involves a thing called net present value, or NPV, which looks at the value now of the cash flows arising in the future. Now, the results of each method of investment appraisal vary. So again, you should be familiar that the payback period is measured in terms of time. For example, two years and five months might be the payback period. The ARR is measured as a percentage, a percentage return on investment. And discounted cash flow techniques are measured in, new, in uh, currency terms, in monetary value. For example, pounds or dollars. Now, let's move on to DCF. We'll often mention in this short video a concept called net present value or NPV. And what the net present value tries to do is to calculate and add up the money value now of all the future cash flows of a project. Now, why is time important there? Why do we want to work out the value now of future cash flows? Well, the answer to this lies in the concept called the time value of money. And the way to, or one way to understand that is to consider this question. What would you rather have? Would you rather me give you a thousand pounds now in cash or would you rather me give you a thousand pounds in cash in two years time? It shouldn't take too long to work out that you'd be better off having a thousand pounds now, partly because you may not trust me to give you a thousand pounds in two years. I might not be around. But secondly, there will be things you could do with that money now that might earn a return. In other words, there's an opportunity cost associated with having to wait two years. And that is essentially what we mean by the time value of money, that cash flows now or in the very short future are worth more than those uh, further on in time. So all you need to understand is that for the time value of money, investment appraisal thinks it's better to receive cash now rather than in the future. And therefore that future cash inflows from a project should be uh, discounted so that they're worth less than cash flows now. And the way we do that, the way we take account of future cash flows being worse is by use of a concept called discount factors. We apply a discount factor or a DF to bring the cash flows of future periods back to their present value. And there's a little calculation you need to remember. That's all you need to know. So how do we do it? How do we calculate the present value of a future cash flow? It's a really simple calculation. You take each cash flow and you multiply it by the discount factor, usually given to you in terms of a decimal rather than a percentage. And that equals the present value. So cash flow times discount factor equals the present value. What is this discount factor? Well, to understand it is to think of perhaps a project like this, where there's an upfront investment of £10,000 and some profits in the next three years. The profits look fine, particularly in year three, where we see that it's £10,000 comes back in, making an overall profit, less the investment of £3,000. A discount factor would say, well, on the face of it, that looks like £3,000 over three years. But actually, that £10,000 profit in year three needs to be discounted or reduced because it's less certain 
to arise. It's too far into the future. So that's the idea of discount factors. We simply apply a percentage to future cash flows to reduce their value, to reduce their significance, to take account of this time value of money. Now, the good news is in exams, you will not be asked to calculate discount factors. You will be given the relevant discount factors to use. And these are calculated by reference to what's known as a discount rate. And typically it's either going to be a 5% discount rate or a 10% discount rate. But don't worry, you won't be asked. I'd be very surprised if you were asked to calculate discount factors. You may be given them in order to do your simple calculations on the present values of the cash flows. But just to understand how discount factors can change depending on the discount rate used, take a look at year five here. Using a 5% discount rate, the discount factor you apply in year five is 0.76, whereas a 10% discount rate, the discount factor is 0.62. Now, what that means is that in five years time, if we discount future cash flows at a 5% rate, we're effectively saying that £100 now uh, would be worth £76 now if we received it in five years time. However, if we use a higher discount rate, that actually has a bigger effect on the investment appraisal. It reduces further the value of future cash flows, just £62 in five years time compared with £100 now. So how do we work them out? We've mentioned this formula already. We take the cash flow, for example, 20,000 times by the discount factor, for example, 0.8, and that calculates a present value. If you want to have a quick go on some calculations, just pause the slide or maybe do this in your head. And when you're ready, start the slide again, start the video again to see whether you've got the right answer. And the answer is 16,000. 20,000 is the cash flow times by the discount factor. It's a simple calculation, multiplication calculation. Now, net present value or NPV simply involves adding up all those little calculations, all those present values. That's all it is. The net present value is adding up all the present values of the future cash flows, including, of course, the initial investment. So here's a little example on the screen. We have a three year project at year zero or time zero. Right now we invest 100,000 and in the next three years, the project generates some profits or cash flows of 40,000, 50,000 and 60. So we can see that the net profits is 50. That's uh, 100, uh, 150,000 there. Take away the 100 investment equals a net profit of 50. However, we want to discount those future cash flows. So if I give you the discount factors, there they are. Could you now have a go, maybe pause the video again and have a go at calculating on a piece of paper what you believe the present values are for those cash flows. Have a go, pause the video, and then when you're ready, start the video again. So let's have a look to see what our present values are. Well, hopefully you've got these numbers. Uh, time zero, there's no need to discount time because we're not in the future. So time zero, our discount factor is one, 100,000 of outflow. But uh, in year one, we apply a discount factor of 0.91 to the net flow of 40,000, meaning that's worth to us now 36,400. We do that for each of the next two profits. And we therefore have got three positive flows coming in in years one, two and three, but discounted back to take account of the time value of money. And to work out the net present value, we simply add all those four up in the column. And if you've done that, hopefully you'll find that the answer is... 23,500, that's positive. Normally with net present value, if the answer is positive, that would suggest that the project is worthwhile. If the answer is negative, it would suggest that the project is not worth pursuing. But we'll touch on that at the end in a few minutes time. So there we go, 23,500 is the net present value positive. Now, just a quick word about how to grab marks by making sure you show your calculations in the exam. Here on the screen is a, a typical exam question. This has actually been taken from one of the new A-level exam sample papers uh, publicly available. But this is very typical of the kind of question you might be uh, asked or the kind of data you might be given that would suggest you need to do some discounted cash flow calculations. Very similar to our last exercise, isn't it? Three year projects, some returns, an outflow of six at time zero, uh, and discount factors that you are in, uh, encouraged to apply to those cash flows. And the question is show the net present value, calculate it, and state whether the investment should be undertaken. 
So what I've done is I've put those details onto a slightly more user-friendly table there. And again, I'd like now ask you to uh, pause the video just for a minute or so, grab a piece of paper, maybe a calculator, or just do it in your head, and calculate what are the present values and the net present value, adding them all up, of those cash flows. Have a go. And welcome back. If you've been having a go at that calculation, let's have a look at the answers. Well, we know that time zero, uh, an outflow of six is still going to be an outflow of six. No need to discount that. But if we apply the discount factors there across each row to each of the net flows, we get those other numbers. For example, in year three, a net return of two times by the discount factor 0 0.86 means that uh, in terms of value of money now, that's worth 1.72. Add them all up. And it comes to a total of 0.39 million, 390,000, which is positive. Therefore, you should accept the project if it's calculated at a 5% discount rate. Here's why it's important to show your workings. Of course, if you get the right answer and state the answer, that's easy, 5 out of 5. But if you make a slight mistake, if you show your workings, you can still get most of the marks. Because in the examiner's mark scheme, there was a mark going for calculating outright, a mark for that a mark for that, a mark for adding all of the numbers up, even if you made a mistake earlier on, and lastly, a mark for making a statement as to whether it should be accepted on the basis of your calculation. So again, even if you got the calculation wrong and your, st and your decision was different, as long as it was consistent with the calculations, you should still get the mark. That's why it's absolutely vital that you show all your calculations on your exam paper, not on a scrap of paper or do it in your head. Finally, let's just finish off by looking at one small exercise here, which just shows you need to be a little bit cautious with discounted cash flow. So, three projects. Which of the following projects should be accepted? And you can either choose one, two, three, or none of them. Project X, Y, and Z. I'm applying a discount rate of 5%, so my discount factors are going to be based on a 5% rate of discount. Here are the investment details. Project X is an investment of £25 million. Project Y, an investment of a million pounds. Project Z, an investment of £50,000. And here is the calculation of NPV. I've done it for you. Project X, a positive of a million. Project Y, a negative of 0 0.5. And Project Z, 30,000 positive. Again, pause the video. Just have a think about those numbers. Think about what the discount rate says. Think about the MPVs and the investment. Which of those projects would you accept? Have a go. And if you've paused the video, welcome back. If not, uh, we're straight through to picking up on some thoughts. Well, don't forget the first rule normally is if the MPV is positive, you should accept. If it's negative, you should reject. So therefore, on that basis, Project X and Project Z would be accepted because they're both positive, whereas Project Y with a big 0 0.5 minus million would be rejected. And certainly Project Y looks like a project that's not worthwhile. However, just a word of caution about Project X. And this is why it's uh, such a great way of using this in your analysis and evaluation of investment appraisal. Don't forget, this is a big investment of 25 million. And we're saying the future values of all the cash flows are positive 1 million which sounds to me like, whilst it's a big number, is a relatively small percentage of the original investment. And it wouldn't take those cash flows to change much, would it, for perhaps the MPV to become negative. Perhaps some of the future cash inflows are turn out to be less than you expect. And don't forget, too, we've used a discount rate of 5%, which doesn't have that big an effect on future cash flows. If we'd use 10%, uh, in other words, using smaller discount factors, then our NPV would almost certainly have been negative. So it's important to remember that you should always question the assumptions used in investment appraisal, in particular investments that appear to be marginally positive from a discounted cash flow point of view, but perhaps on the basis that they've simply been calculated with a low discount rate. So in summary, key points from this session. Firstly, of course, Golden rule for all calculations we mentioned in this, in this in all the webinars, show your workings. There are marks going even if your calculator goes on the blip and you get the answer wrong. If you show your workings, still pick up the marks. The key calculation to practice, take the cash flow, multiply by the discount factor that you get given. 
Show your workings, calculate the present va value of each cash flow. To work out the total project net present value, simply add up all the present values. Add them all up. Don't forget that the original investment almost certainly is a negative. So watch out for the negative numbers. But also watch out for these small projects with just a small MPV, perhaps as a proportion of the investment. It could be that the, uh, the cash flow assumptions are maybe not as, uh, as sensible as cautious as they should be and therefore actually the, the project could be a negative MPV. There we go guys that's just a, a bit of a whistle stop tour through what was quite a long webinar on discounted cash flow. Hopefully you found that useful you'll join me for a future webinar or perhaps one of the other videos on the YouTube channel. Thank you.